want to start by just giving you some information about the pros and the cons of salt versus sand. Because it's not necessarily always going to be the case that it's going to work best for you to try and reduce your salt usage by replacing it with sand. And once we have a better grip on that, then I'll address the more specific questions about how pre-wetted sand performs. Sand is the original winter maintenance material. Sand is the first material that was used to help increase the friction of icy road surfaces in the winter. In recent decades, though, sand has largely been replaced by chemical de-icers, like sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, those sorts of things. Because the chemical de-icers have been found to generally be a lot more effective at restoring the road to a safe to a safe friction level after a snowstorm than sand is. However, sand is still used for winter maintenance, and there are instances where sand makes good sense to use. Now, there are a number of good references that you can check out to learn more about the performance characteristics of sand and to see how it's best used. Uh, I've provided some references for you that you can easily find on the web. So I would encourage you to go and just do Google searches on these titles. You can easily find these references. And go ahead and read those if you want to get some more detailed information about the performance characteristics of sand as a winter maintenance material. But for right now, I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of how sand behaves. So the first thing we want to bear in mind about sand and abrasives is that they have no ice melting capacity. They will not function as either de-icers or anti-icers in the conventional sense. That is, they're not going to actually remove snow or ice from the road. What they can do is give you a temporary increase in road friction on icy pavements. And that's really what we're after. What we're after is increasing the friction of the road so we don't have slippery conditions causing accidents. Whether we do that by removing the ice and snow and removing the, freeze, the slippery condition, or whether we do it by putting a gritty, high friction sand layer on, either way it gets us to where we want to be. So it's just a question of which one is the most appropriate for the given condition. Now, if we're going to use sand, there's a few caveats that we want to bear in mind. The first one is that dry sand is poorly effective. And the reason for this is that there's been numerous studies that have shown dry sand is very easily blown off the road by even moderate amounts of traffic action. So if you're going to use sand, you should always use it wetted. You should pre-wet the sand with water or with a, a de-icing liquid. And that is going to freeze the sand onto the ice surface and help protect it from being knocked off by traffic action. Studies have shown that pre-wetting sand will enable you to reduce your sanding application rate by as much as 50%. Now, the other thing we want to bear in mind about sand is it is not environmentally innocuous. It's not the case that sand is environmentally friendly and the de-icing chemicals are environmentally bad, and therefore you should always use sand whenever you possibly can to avoid the bad effects of de-icing chemicals. There's no such thing as a environmentally perfect material or chemical. All materials have their own characteristic environmental impact. So our ultimate environmental strategy is always to identify the particular chemical that works best under a certain condition and which we can use the least of. So as I mentioned, sand has got its own environmental impact. For example, sand will impact air quality. Sand contributes to PM10 levels. PM10 refers to very tiny particles, and these can form as the sand is crushed by traffic action. Very tiny particles that are smaller than about 10 micron in size, they're small enough that they can remain suspended in the air, and they have detrimental effects on air quality. Another a uh, negative effect of sand is that the use of sand will cause buildup of sediment and turbidity in waterways. And so sand has negative effects on uh, aquatic ecosystems. And there have been studies by ecological ex experts that have concluded that the detrimental environmental effects of sand generally outweigh those of ice melting chemicals. Now again, does that mean we should never use sand? No. It means we, we use sand when it's appropriate to use sand. And basically when that is, is either if the temperature is so cold that the regular de-icing chemicals won't melt the ice, then there's no point in using them. We should use sand to get some temporary friction until the temperature warms up enough that the de-icers will work. 
Another instance where we can use sand is if you've got a very strongly bonded hard pack of ice or snow on the road that the plows can't remove. In that case, again, sanding is a good option until the plows are able to come through and remove the, uh, the compacted snow and ice.